Okay, guys, so <laughs> should I use the word back? I don't know. Should I just use hey, how you doing? I'm here. What, what's going on? What it do? I think I'm gonna go with that one. That one sounds better. Hey, how are you? How's it going? How you been? What you been up to? Um, yes, I've been dealing with a lot of different things, and I just wanted to talk about something that I thought was extremely important. Um, something that I kind of just want to put a message out about and that is emotional abuse, mental abuse, however you want to word it. When um, you are experiencing someone gaslighting you, in other words, deflecting everything that they do onto you, basically making you feel like you're losing your mind, basically telling you that you're making that up that never happened that's not true what are you talking about i don't recall you know just deflection at its finest that's what gaslighting is all about it's all about making you feel like you're going crazy hyping you up making you feel like this this is just this is about me i'm making this up i'm, I'm making this happen this happened because of me like this is not a real thing it's just all in my imagination and something's wrong with me i'm a messed up person that's what gaslighting does and that's a form of emotional abuse because when people can't take accountability for the things that they've done, what do you think they do? They project it onto you, which a lot of people do this every single day. A lot of people strategically use emotional abuse to their, their advantage and you won't even know that you're being emotionally abused until you actually look it up or you play back those conversations in your head and you think to yourself, wow, like, how did that make me feel because like for instance if you go into a conversation feeling confident because you're thinking to yourself okay we're gonna communicate we're gonna get our points across it's gonna be something that's gonna be good for both uh that person and myself um it's gonna be something that's gonna help us to move forward we're gonna learn from this and we're gonna grow closer okay that's what the ideal objective is right that's what the average person would want right okay cool and then let's say you go into it with that kind of mindset, but then you leave out thinking you're less of a person, something's wrong with you, you're the problem, you have a lot of issues that you need to deal with, everything's your fault, why do you always do this kind of stuff, you brought this upon yourself. Um, if you hadn't just said anything, everything will be fine and now matters are worse because you said something and you should have kept your mouth closed because you're an issue and you bother everybody and you make everybody upset and you make your life worse than it has to be. That is what we call emotional abuse. <laughs> and when that happens to you time and time and time again, it can actually form brain damage in a lot of different ways. Um, that's why a lot of people experience memory loss. That's why a lot of people have a lack of identity you know, you feel like you're a shadow of a person. You have a lot more shadow work to do, by the way, when that does tend to happen. So uh, saddle up for that one. It's not a good ride to be going on, but it does tend to happen. But that, it doesn't mean that your life is over. It doesn't mean that you're, you can't bounce back. Not at all. You definitely can. But it's just you're going to have to try harder than the average person because once you experience such extreme levels of emotional abuse it can cause all kinds of symptoms that we're not aware of like depression is a huge factor of this because like i said that person is breaking you down every day especially if it's a consistent thing all day long like if it's your partner for instance it could be a friend too it could be a platonic relationship it doesn't always have to be romantic it could be your family like I'm not categorizing this into just romanticism, although it is more common in romantic relationships than anything else because it's more common for someone's partner to be emotionally abusive than let's say a friend because for some reason, we don't necessarily allow our friends to go to extreme levels like we would our significant others. I don't know why. Um, if you feel otherwise, please let me know down in the comments. But from personal experience and from what I've seen with other people around me, I find that we will let our significant others put our put us through so much more than a friend. We're not even going to tolerate our friends. We're going to be like, deuces, our friendship is over. Like, I ain't got time for this. I will replace you type of vibe before we, you know, do the thing with romanticism. And I, I think that's because 
it's some sort of chemical like dopamine the release of dopamine that you get from being in love or having that emotional attachment romantically to someone it has a strong effect on you it's like a drug it's like when you're addicted to that you know what i mean and with an addiction we all know it's hard to withdraw it's hard to go through through those withdrawals because you gotta understand when that person's not there anymore that's when it's like you're you're basically mourning them it's almost like they they die in a sense in your word uh, in your world excuse me they die to you mentally they may physically be there still which they are but that version that you experienced is no longer there that person that you used to call or text or look forward to seeing or hearing from or feeling having intimacy with is no longer there you cannot experience that person in the same way so that's why personally i think it's harder to pull away from someone that's a significant other compared to a platonic friendship you know because a lot of us tend to think okay friends come and go but lovers it's like oh my gosh you're the one you have to be the one and even if they're not the one we try to force them to be the one you know and that that's that's really unhealthy because if they're not meant to be there they'll show you that and emotional abuse is one of the main ways that they're showing you that they don't care about you they don't care about how you feel how you feel does not matter because if anything when people emotionally abuse you that's letting you know that they feel stronger knowing that you feel worse than they do knowing that you're beneath them makes them feel good even though you aren't you are not i'm not saying you're beneath them i'm saying them just having one up on you having power over you in some way making you feel as though you're beneath them that is what makes them feel good so how can somebody that makes you feel beneath them possibly love you how does that equate to love it doesn't if anything that's like a form of hatred to me that's how i look at it because if somebody loves you and they know that what they're doing is hurting you and they continue to do so time and time again that's not love you know what i mean if anything like i said that's like they're they're the enemy they're trying to attack you they're trying to tear you down they're trying to see you struggle they enjoy your struggles they enjoy your downfalls they enjoy your shortcomings they they maximize on your flaws and they point them out to the world they they don't only point it out to you it's like they go on this campaign and show the world how you don't mean anything to them or you're not a good person or they try to take away from all the good qualities that you withhold because that's the objective emotional abuse that's the whole point is to take away from you it's not to build you it's to subtract so any way possible they're gonna do that especially mentally they, they, they gotta get to you on a mental scale so how do people get to you mentally through words they have to vocalize how they feel and especially like i said if it's romantic it's easier to do that because you want your lover to to feel strongly about you right you want your lover to care about you you want your lover to look up to you to look at you with awe complete admiration you know to 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 be where their eyes aren't big enough to see you to be in love with you to be in love with the thought of you in every aspect that you you showcase you know and that's powerful that's where the drug like mentality comes into play um and like i had said earlier not so much with friendships but i mean it can happen it can still be the same way you can still get emotionally abused from your friends and your family um especially your family because i feel like family and the significant other are maybe the most common factors of emotional abuse because it's so much easier for your family to abuse you and your significant other to abuse you because you feel like you have to stay a lot of those situations within a lot of those situations you feel like you have to stay you feel like you have to tolerate it you feel like it has to be this way you know you feel like this is it you know like okay especially if like let's say your mom is doing it to you let's say your dad is doing it to you let's say your siblings are doing it to you your aunts uncles whoever you know your grandparents it doesn't matter 
you feel obligated to listen to that because you think this is my flesh and blood this is my family what they say is okay because they love me they know what's best for me right that's what the average person would think that's what someone you know who is a very family oriented person would think and that's not your fault you're not stupid for that nothing's wrong with you for thinking like that i think like that too but even then that's no excuse to tolerate it even then they shouldn't talk to you like that either you know no one family friends lover even your own kids should not talk to you like that you know what i mean so it, it does not matter where it's coming from it's not okay it's never gonna be okay it should never be a thing it should never be consistent either the fact that it happens once is enough for it to happen again and again and again and again and again and if you don't correct it it will happen again and again and again and again and again because you got to understand like let's say you get into it with your lover and they curse you out and they call you all kinds of different names everything under the sun and they make you cry and they make you feel bad about yourself and you're defeated and then they come over and apologize and then you guys make up and everything's okay you're then sending the message to them that all right it's okay for you to do this i, I tolerate it because you didn't give them any type of consequence behind doing that to you for instance i mean i can't tell you how to treat that person from then on because hell i'm not even sure still yet because like i said it's, it's a lot but i know that taking them back right away would not be the right answer because that doesn't show any type of result you know what i mean that doesn't show any type of um positive result in 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 their mind because it's like that that's letting them know that you're weak i'm not saying you're weak i'm just saying to them they're like oh this person all i have to do is say i'm sorry and that's it i just have to say two words and then it's all good so i can curse you out every day i can hang up on you i can slap you around i can do whatever i want and if i say i'm sorry that's enough you get what I'm saying? Whereas if they try to apologize and you say, okay, I understand that, but, and I appreciate you apologizing, but I do need time for myself and I still would like to think things over and I would still like to have my space, my personal time to um, internalize everything that's happened and I'll get back to you, you know? Then that lets them know, oh, whoa, like distance yourself because then that, that sends some sort of fear you know to them like they should be fearful of if they should do that again what can possibly happen you know you should let them know like hey i don't tolerate that kind of stuff and if it happens again i'm not dealing with it anymore like the fact that it happened once is already alarming to me you know so if you were to ever do that again i will not be in contact with you any longer and I, we would have to call it quits. We would have to cut this off, you know, because I deserve better than that. And I'm not going to tolerate that. And I know I don't disrespect you like that. So don't disrespect me like that. If we're going to be doing this, we're going to be equal. We're going to respect each other. We're going to be adults. And we're going to understand that respect goes a long way. Loyalty goes a long way. And betrayal is a huge thing. They don't value you you know and when someone doesn't value you i feel like they will do anything so it's just it's difficult because you got to watch how people talk to you you know um and you got to watch the kind of energy you allow into your life your circle um your home life especially if you're living with this person it's even worse so you definitely have to establish those boundaries you definitely have to nip that in the bud right away because that's a huge red flag if they would have ever raised their voice at you if they would have ever you know it could be physical action like slamming doors anything of that sort uh-uh you got to put a stop to that because that is a form of emotional abuse because it's trying to instill fear within you you know what i mean it's trying to make you afraid in some way because it's like it's letting you know like hey i'm gonna act violent and that's gonna make you submit to me that's a form of emotional abuse that's a tactic to make you afraid of them so it doesn't matter what it is if they have to do it physically mentally but it's, it's more prone i mean it's more common um in the mental aspect through words than actions because then that would be domestic abuse but the two go together best believe emotional and domestic usually happen within the same relationship 
Because like I said, it may start off with them cursing you out. Then it goes from them cursing you out to them physically hitting you, you know, and even worse, you know, but you don't want to test those levels. You don't want to allow it to get that far. You know what I mean? It should not even get to that level at all. It shouldn't even get to the emotional level, you know, but it tends to happen. And I'm not saying that I don't believe these types of people can change because I feel like people, uh, they will do whatever you allow them to do. If somebody has never corrected someone's behavior before, they're going to think it's okay. So maybe you need to be the first one to correct it, if not the second or third or however many people, you know, and let them know like, hey, you might have done that in your previous relationship, but that's not going to fly with me because if you do that, I'm leaving, you know, that. And a lot of people think, well, that doesn't do anything because it, what if they don't care? Okay, then they don't care. But at least, you know, you have your self-respect at the end of the day. The whole point is not to get them to care. The point is to get yourself to care about you. To get yourself to understand what's okay and what's not okay. And to understand that you deserve to be treated well. You deserve to be treated with love, respect, and and everything positive you don't deserve to be around that kind of behavior you don't deserve to experience those levels of trauma because trust me it is not fun it is not cute that toxic relationship stuff is for the birds it does nothing but damage people and trust me it's damage that you wish to god every day you wish to god you never experienced so just nip it in the bud while you can if you can and like I said, if they're not willing to work on it with you, if they're not willing to stop what they're doing, if they're not willing to acknowledge, first step is acknowledgement, if they're not even willing to acknowledge what they're doing wrong, then it's not even worth your time. It's not worth your energy because you got to see yourself as a dime a dozen. You know, you got to understand that you have a lot to give. You have a lot to offer. And... If somebody isn't willing to appreciate that or willing to meet you halfway, why waste your time when they're clearly not even caring? When they clearly don't even matter, really. Because those who matter, they'll show up every time. Those who matter, they'll do whatever it takes to make it work every time. Those who matter will be afraid to lose you. You won't have to chase them. You won't have to wonder. You won't have to feel less than. You won't have to feel like you don't exist or you're invisible or inadequate in any way because if they matter to you in this journey and they're supposed to be there they're not gonna make you feel that way you know like i said people make mistakes but i also said if they don't correct those wrongs they don't matter it's just honest to god they don't because people that love you they'll show you that they love you that's not to say they won't do the wrong thing sometimes because they're human they're they're bound to make mistakes nobody's perfect but at the same time they understand when it's a mistake and they correct it and they they make it their mission to redeem the situation if that makes any sense so um that's just a little bit of some tips on emotional abuse and how that goes um that's very light compared to what i really want to dive into you know um but like i said i just wanted to kind of get back into the groove of things but I, I plan on talking about a lot more deeper topics especially regarding mental health and spirituality astrology all that good stuff because i did notice that you guys do like when i do astrology so i also want to do that too um and yeah we'll see how that goes as well but with that being said i hope you guys are still with me please be sure to subscribe leave me some comments if you've ever experienced any type of situations with emotional abuse it could be friendship wise it could be in romantic relationships it could be with family whatever the case is there's no specific category i was just wondering if anybody experienced that and you know just share it in the comments and little do you know your story could help somebody else because maybe they thought they were the only ones that went through that situation and here you are with the same thing so it can only help sharing your story or your testimony can only help so that's what i'm learning each and every day that god gives you these experiences or the universe whatever you believe in gives you these experiences because you're supposed to do something with them you're supposed to put them out in some sort of content-based way because why else would they be happening to you for you to share for you to help someone else to avoid or to get through something you've been through or currently are dealing with 
so but yeah please be sure to subscribe once again um leave me some love in the comments like the video share it uh if you like as well that would be awesome and yeah welcome me back in guys i'm trying i know i'm trying don't bite my head off i'm trying so we're gonna take this thing slow like i said i'm just do my best to post as much as i can because i have a lot of content ideas that i want to put out there and i'm hoping that you guys will be here along that journey to experience it all with me as we go through and let's see what happens but until then god bless you and i hope that you have a great day night wherever you are and don't be afraid to be you and put that story out there because somebody needs it somebody's waiting on it and it's destined to be so i'll see you guys later I know